Welcome back to another episode of Candy Fresh. I'm your host, Khalid. And I'm Anahita. And we have an amazing lineup. We got DJ Doug D in the house. Give it up. DJ Doug D. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And of course, we got my man, Andy Sturdivant here. He's amazing. Yes, yes. Give it up for him. He is an amazing artist as well. He's going to showcase some of his tricks. We have the lovely Heather McElrath here in the house tonight. And last but certainly not least, the incredible Craig Dunn is joining us here today. So, we're going to chat, we're going to show you what these artists got up their sleeves, and uh, don't go anywhere because you're watching another episode of Candy Fresh. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy Fresh gon' show up, get your shine on. If that Candy Fresh got that new now, now. Welcome back, you guys. We're going to do something a little different this episode. Now, me and Anahita, of course, you see us interviewing other guests, but you don't really know us that well, right? So we're going to give you a chance to do that. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about Kalik, Anahita, and how we incorporate artistry right here in the Twin Cities. Um, I have a lot to say. I love this topic so much. So they're saying 12 minutes. They're going to have to tell us to wrap it up because we are, <laughs> and both of us actually, we're really involved. But I'm going to ask you actually real quick, how would you define artistry? How would I define artistry? I think of it as a creative release in a way. Mm -hmm. It's a way to get your thoughts out of your head and share it with the world. So for me, with the art that I create, um, I, I write. I think writing is a great way. For me, it's art to me because it's a way for me to get my thoughts out of my head and also share a narrative that doesn't always get told mm -hmm. from a black male perspective. Mm -hmm. So I got a company that I created. It's called uh, Good Riddance. Good um, written. Yeah, and it stands for getting rid of an unwanted person, place, thing, and mindset. Wow. To shed that weight to be the person that you envision yourself being. It's wow. creating more visionaries, if you will, and raising the bar and expectations in our community. We give it up. Can we uh, give it up for Kalik on that <laughs> one? I mean, what? Oh, thank you. A young black strong man making a way for himself and obviously to inspire others in the community. And hopefully globally, yeah. right? There'll it's be a movement. Always, always um, a movement. Start in your, in your backyard first, though, right? You have to. Or in the garage or wherever. The coffee table. Hey, that's how Apple got started. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in the garage. So writing. Mm -hmm. you're, you're big on writing. Yeah. Um, what else What else do you do? I've seen you do some yeah, things around yeah. town. So for me, like the writing gets the ideas out because I can always visualize it before it exists. And I think that's... The biggest thing for me and the feedback I got from a lot of my mentors is like, man, you got some good ideas, but when are you going to put them into action? Right. So my thing was to become more action oriented and to move on the ideas that I had. And it was just a feeling inside of me. I think everyone has that from time to time. I got a feeling. You're right. And <laughs> it was just the spirit in me was like, you need to, you know, don't hide your gifts. You know, don't put them on a shelf like one of Andy's toys. Mm -hmm. You know, actually show the world what you got, because it may be something that another person needs to hear to help right. them on their journey. It can inspire them. You know, you don't even know like what door that could even open for yourself. Mm -hmm. It could be the reflective phase. It could be 
you're searching for more creativity and more artistry. Exactly. And it could turn into a whole different ball game 15 years from now. Yeah, and then like just going on that, for me, like good riddance is also something you can live by. It's uh, mm -hmm. mind, body, and soul. Like so for me, in order for me to want to share my story, mm -hmm. I want it to not just go up on stage and act. I want it to be me, you know, a real, real life example of who I am. True colleague. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want to act because I'm like, I feel like the best people that I love the most are people who are always themselves. Right. Um, authentic. Yeah. And that's how I want it to be. I didn't want to go up on a podium or go into a school speaking to yeah. students and not really exemplify it. One thing I hated in school the most is when I'd see a gym teacher or something who couldn't do a push-up himself. I'm like, oh. make sure you do a push-up and make sure your chest touch the ground before your belly do. <laughs> <laughs> so for and me, then demand us to do 25 of them. Exactly. So just with that, I just wanted to make sure I exemplified the things that I was telling the people. So it right. was about a year and a half of self-reflecting. I ended up getting a journal, and um, I challenged myself to write in it every single day, to be honest about my you know, strengths, weaknesses, right. and about the things I was experiencing, and to really become more self-accountable. I think one of the cool things about you, Kalik, is I see your work through Instagram. I mean, mm -hmm. social media, obviously. I love my Instagram. And um, periodically, when I watch your stories, yeah. you always start your day with um, your spiritual time mm -hmm. and writing in your in your journal, which, by the way, I have the exact same one, but like a girly Told version of faking. it. Hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. Right. And, um, and whether I'm your core target or not, it's inspiring to see somebody like that hustle. But also, just the charisma that comes from that, mm -hmm. because it's so natural, and it's just you, whether you're being total goofball, or like feeling yourself in the mirror, or mm -hmm. like you're modeling, you did other artistry here. Yeah. You didn't go into that yet. Um, oh, it was, you know. Or he was getting there, he was getting <laughs> there. there. Um, or even coming here, mm -hmm. and, and casting this here into the Twin Cities. So, what else do you do to celebrate artistry here in the Twin Cities? Because yeah. I have seen you out. I mean, I host events. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the music scene. I love our film scene. The fashion industry is just, they all kind of like, they're all so separate, but all kind of blend they together. They do. Yeah. They mesh off of each other. And I've seen you out and about. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of come from, a, if you will, kind of like a musical family. And my great grandmother and my grandmother, they were both like actors and models and things of that nature, too. Um, so for me, my family was very musical. Like we would always watch The Temptations, right? Hey, and, yes. uh, or the Jackson Five. And <laughs> I know all the songs in the back of my hand. Um, now, if you correlate, we had a big family too, family of eight. <clears throat> and my brother, Raji, who's a recording artist, um, and he's so many different hats. He was just a great man and a mentor of mine as well. He was more of the, you know, the Michael. I was more of the Tito, you know? <laughs> you had your characters yeah, in place. You know, like I, can, I can hum a tune, and I can good enough to sing you happy birthday, but not too much further than that. Um, Although but, last episode, you guys, you saw him try to break it down with the rap. Uh, you know, you know a few, few bars in. Going out few, there. Uh, <laughs> but just with that, I wanted to, you know, see if I could, what else I could be good at. You mm. know, I wanted to be more of a renaissance man, and not just to be stuck in one trajectory but you know whatever i liked and the things that i wanted to be a part of right. what like if i want to be a public speaker what things around that target will amplify that skill set yeah. so i'm like well i might as well get into acting i might as well get into modeling if i'm going to be someone that's seen and then i started getting into fitness right. and then that just amplified everything because now i was walking business card, like, oh man, you look kind of swole there. What's, what you do? Like, and you oh. never know what that opportunity can bring, right? Yeah. You may need to um, head over to a casting call because you're just the right physique that they're looking for. Exactly. And you're like, I oh, know I've been hitting the gym for a reason. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. I've been hitting the ice cream shop for a reason. So <laughs> if you're out there looking for an ice cream model, I got you. <laughs> um, but this is a one-sided yeah, conversation. I'm trying well, to learn a little bit more about you. Well, no, so let's go right. Okay, so you said music. I'm going to piggyback off of yeah. that. Obviously, I, I love music so much that I married a Motown soul artist. So yeah. obviously, in the family. Yeah. Um, when I was little, when I was three years old, we're going to throw it way back to mm -hmm. Hida, baby Hida. I, I, there's, this, there's this picture. 
that my mom can't blackmail me if I, if I like flaunt it myself, right? But I'm in my underwear and I'm wearing this really cute chic blazer. Like talk about a three-year-old with style. And I had an air guitar. Just jamming <laughs> out to what was then the old school VH1 mm -hmm. where they actually had music videos on MTV in the late 80s. And uh, I was jamming out to fine young cannibals. She drives me crazy. Ah, Anybody? Yes, it's totally yeah, yeah, yeah. on my alley. <laughs> and uh, he's gonna go Google that right now. <laughs> so I just like growing up, I've always had it's such a universal language too. So through college and high school, I mean, there's like cheerleading. That's an artistry. It's mm -hmm. also a sport. And yeah. then I would always choreograph dances for like the Persian um, New Year every year. So dance and choreography, then teaching belly dancing, mm -hmm. and then being a, in a household where we just embrace Persian music and you know pop top forty and then Motown and the Temptations and all that. Yeah. So oh, it's just like I love it, right? And it's fun to now see mm -hmm. my three year old who has her own guitar. I gotta get a side by side picture, y'all. That's gonna be so cute. <laughs> uh, it just it's like an evolutionary thing, and it doesn't mm -hmm. get old. Exactly. Um, and then I actually used to. I currently, I mean, I always support, but I represented a big part of the Twin Cities um, entertainment industry through my PR work. Yeah. So I represented hip hop artists, all sorts of musicians. That's actually how I met my husband. Mm -hmm. um, fashion designers, filmmakers, and anything in between. So for me, I couldn't just pick one. I had to do all the things. Yeah. And it's so cool to hear their stories, like they're their individual journeys and how it's similar and so drastically different from mine. But you know what I see at the root of all of it is heart, soul, and just dedication. Absolutely. I mean, the grind is crazy, you guys. Whether you're working your tail off to get an album out there or whether you got choreography for a performance you're trying to dance on stage or a film mm -hmm. or a program you're launching. It's all the stuff that you intense. don't get to see. You know, that's really what challenges me. Um, you know, it's kind of in a way like putting those 10,000 hours in and yeah. it's like you don't recognize how much more you need to train until you have the opportunity to showcase your skill set. And other people may, it may yeah. go well or it may go south, yeah. but it's still a learning moment because after you finish, no matter any opportunity that I do, I'm like, ah, I can do that a little bit better next time. Yeah, or here's the other thing to kind of piggyback off that mm -hmm. a little bit is conquering your fear. Yeah. I wish I could be a photographer like that person. I wish I could sing like her. I wish I could rap. I wish I could dance. I wish I could um, create a video. Well, if that's something that someone, here's my, my little advice. If someone's got something that they really want to try or wishes that they could do, just give it a try. There's no yeah. wrong way to do it. It's a positive leap. And you never know what it could turn into. Exactly. So I love this community. They constantly inspire me. Um, you're talking about your program. Yeah. I am just debuting in the month of June um, a little program of my own. It's Ooh. called KIDS, K-I-D-S. It stands for Kindness, Independence, Diversity, and Strength. Mm -hmm. And it's to empower young girls to be confident and courageous. Hey. Yes. So I'm so excited for that. Um, thank you. And he's got good riddance. And mm. you know what? We're vibing off each other. We kind yeah. of always do. But maybe we should just bring all the youths together. Yeah. Which I think we're talking about that in an upcoming episode. Mm -hmm. Embracing our youth community. So whether they're artists or, I mean, even the youth yeah. around the Rondo area that worked on that incredible film. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. So I could go on and on and on. <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's just like a little bit about me and like yeah. what drives my passion and the direction I'm going. So whether if it's through the program or the business I'm running or, you know, working with you side by side. All the things that you stay do. Stay tuned Please. to the world of Anahita and the life of Kalik. <laughs> yes. So you guys can definitely find us. Um, I'm on social media platforms under Kalik Rogers and or you can go on my Instagram at Life of Kalik, which is K-H-A-L-I-Q-U-E. If you want to look up any of my work, you can go to my website at Good Riddance. That's G-O-O-D-R-I-D-D-A-N-C-E. He's got that down. LLC.org. Nice. And I am Anahita Champion on all platforms. Um, it's Anahita.com is my website. Mm -hmm. Just Google me. I think there's relatively good stuff out there. <laughs> you never know with this internet these days. But right? we are not done. I mean, we're going to pause on talking about us and talk a little bit more about the incredible artists here joining us today for this episode. So don't go anywhere. You're watching another episode of Candy, Candy Fresh. Fresh.
fresh got the new now next If you were those artists in the city Come on and get your shine on Get your shine on Candy fresh gon' show love Get your shine on Welcome back. Once again, I'm Kalik, and today we have a special guest with us. This is Andy Sturdivant. So, Andy, you know, we're here as a creative, so what art do you do? Well, I do a couple different kinds. I mean, I guess writer and artist is usually what I tell people. But mm -hmm. then I got the, the whole other side where I'm in, you know, arts admin, too. Yeah. Like, so I'm working with artists ah. about the same kinds of questions that I'm trying to figure out <laughs> in my own artistic practice. So it's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of a nice balance between being uh, you know, a person that works with artists and then a person who is an artist as well. Right. So you're kind of like, you're mentoring as you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly like that old joke of the piano teacher that just says it's a, like one week ahead of the right. student. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like that. Like, oh, I just did this last week. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So what led you into this artistic journey? Like, what was your first memory of being creative or what, is, what kind of fostered that? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a really creative household, which always helps. Like, my mom is, a, you know, and is still a working artist, and, yeah. you know, she was always taking me to museums and, you know, sending me for art lessons, and, you know, she'd, like, she'd call the newspaper and say, like, I, I want my son to meet with the cartoonist, so, you know, I get to, like, meet the cartoonist what? at the newspaper. I was very excited. Shout out to mom. <laughs> I know. She, she did a great <laughs> job. Um, it, my dad, you know, was really into to art as well, like writing and movies and mm -hmm. things like that. So, I mean, it was always just like, it was just kind of in the atmosphere growing yeah. up. So, I mean, I never really thought of like an earliest memory just because it was always... It was inevitable. Yeah, it was inevitable. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, when I told him, like, I don't even remember telling him that I was going to major in, in, in art. You right. know, it was like, it wasn't even a conversation. It was like, oh, like yeah, yeah, you're going to go do art. Like, yeah, that's, you know, that's what you've been up to. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I just think like, I got a lot of support early on. Which is really Man, nice. That's sweet. And just thinking about that, having that support early on, like fosters that creativity is, and allows that to stay alive. What do you see in the world now as you, as you see art and how art's being? We, we were in technology world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So with that, as you were growing, growing up and growing up and kind of going through that motion, mm -hmm. what did you figure out as you were transitioning into this new age of art? Yeah, I mean, it's a new age, but it's also like it reminds me a lot of. of what I was seeing and experiencing when I was growing up. Because, you know, when you're when you're young and just kind of learning about the world, you know, you're watching TV. And, you know, I was like very early internet, you know, right. dial up, mm -hmm. the modem <laughs> kind of kind of era. Um, and, you know, you'd read about things or hear about things or like when I would be reading books, mm -hmm. I would, I would um, you know, the author would mention like two other writers that, that it inspired him or her. Gotcha. And so then I'd go down to the library and be like, okay, well, who are they? And right. then you kind of, you just follow that back all the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's the same kind of thing with the way I use you know, technology now, I use the internet. I mean, it's the kind of thing where I'll be on Instagram yeah. and I'll see a work by somebody who's, whose work is just incredible and mm -hmm. I will you know, see who they're following. Right. And check them kind out. Of, yeah, check them out and mm -hmm. then like, see like, do we have any mutual followers and then, you know. Do you, do you like a picture if you're observing? Yeah, yeah. Cool. You know, sometimes you can't people, do too much. Yeah, right. <laughs> they go back like four weeks in the feed, and it's just like heart, oh, heart, be heart. It's like, oh my god, what does this person want from me? Yeah, yeah. It's there's there's a there's an unwritten etiquette. I think right. you gotta. <laughs> I like that. What they call a slide in the DM. Yeah, slide into the DM. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm the guy that just liked like four weeks worth of your photos. He's like, this is, I'm just gonna, oh, I love your artwork. Yeah. Is that really what you love? You gotta be easy. Yeah, you gotta take it easy. You, know, you can't be too uh, too desperate, I guess. <laughs> so when it comes to the, your artist development, what was the first thing that you stuck to? Like once it's like when you threw it on the wall and it just stuck. Yeah. What was that for you? I mean, it's always drawing for me. Like mm. that was kind of the heart of all of it, just because I, I really, you know, I grew up in a good age for, for comics, like you know, especially yeah. with with like newspaper comics. You know, it was like Calvin and Hobbes mm -hmm. and you know, Bloom County, and we had this great one called The Family Business, which was about a barber shop and all the people okay. that hung out at the barber shop. And, yeah. and you know, that was a local guy too. So you know, I would write him a letter and he'd you write got me to meet back. Yeah, well. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was just like these people were always kind of present, and drawing always seemed for me like. It was kind of at the core of everything that I did as a visual artist. Right. Um, but then I ended up doing a lot more writing, you know, than visual arts. So, and that was like that mm. followed a nat natural trajectory too, I think, because, um, you know, like studio art's kind of lonely, right? right? It's like you're, you're just, just kind of there. cooped up there and drawing, and maybe you get to like talk to someone once in a while. But um, the thing that I liked about writing and writing nonfiction, especially, is like you have to go out and talk to people and like yeah. interview them, and like that's, that's fun. It's not fun for everybody, right. but like I always like, oh yeah, like, it's just like cold call people and, you know, Man, <laughs> see. I can only imagine. So when it comes to, like, having that dynamic of artistry, mm -hmm. 
as you're moving into this age, right? Mm -hmm. And because what I kind of struggle with from time to time is when I'm doing art, you kind of get the, like, ah, this took me hours to do this. Yeah. And now they're rendering it easily on, <laughs> on, on a simple platform, like Procreate or something yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Um, how do you keep like the naturalism of art alive in what you do? I mean, there's always going to be some kind of like, I don't know, a fingerprint or some kind of like right. mark of the artist, you yeah. know? Because even with like any digitally rendered art, you still have somebody in there that's putting their own spin on it, yeah. that's kind of, you know, making it theirs in some way. And I mean, right. that's the part that, I mean, that's the thing about, you know, I feel like you were asking earlier, like what makes artistry? Yeah. And like part of it is like an expressive thing. Right. And there's also like a technical aspect to it. And those things really like work in concert really nicely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you master the, the technical stuff, you, right. know, you can figure out a way to use it to express the thing that you want to express in a way that's going to be really. So it's like learning the rules to break the rules. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. And you put your own signature on there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like if you get good enough, you don't even need to put a signature on there because you see it and it's like, oh, yeah. I knew it's Kalik. Yeah, it's Andy. Like, of course. <laughs> like, who else would make something like this? All right. Yeah. So when it comes into the art world, for those who are joining it or you know are already involved in it, mm -hmm. what would be if they didn't have like that same dynamic as you had mm -hmm. growing up? Yeah, and a lot of people you, don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest to those individuals as they network and come into their artistry? What are like some good best practices? I think you just go meet people. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I think you just be really genuine and really be really open. I mean, people like talking about their work. You know, yeah. like people are always. Not always, I shouldn't say that. Many people, most people, are pretty open about just sharing, you know, like what they do. Because like, I remember when I was younger, like I was always like calling people and emailing people and just like asking, you know, like can I come see your work? Like right. I saw your show, like it was really great. Um, and so I always think when I'm, you know, at the point that I am now, you know, when like people are getting in touch with me asking those same things, you kind right. of like, you pay it back, you know? I it's see. like you have that responsibility as somebody that, you know, learned a lot from mentors and mm -hmm. from peers to you know, be that supportive, I think. To give a return on their investment. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I like that. So would you say, more or less, when it comes to nowadays, a person may have an even bigger advantage of networking because <laughs> a lot of people don't follow up. Yeah. You know, because they're just like, oh, hey, nice yeah, to meet yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard all about you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll take your car. Yeah, right, yeah, cool. yes, yeah, yeah. And they never use it. Right, yeah, exactly. Because what I've recognized is the fact that I actually do follow up with mm -hmm. people. Yeah. One, they're excited that I followed yeah. up. Like, oh, you yeah. actually followed up. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, here, since you care, uh -huh. let me help you as much as I can. Yeah. So with that, you know, what is the best way that people can follow up with you? Well, I got it easy in some ways because, like, my job is to sit at a desk by a telephone and a computer <laughs> waiting for people to get in touch with me. You know, it's right. like operators are standing by. So when I meet someone, I know that I have to follow up with them because if I don't, they can call me and say, hey, Andy, I emailed you, like, oh, three weeks ago. Did you get it? Yeah. But always that. It's like, did you get it? It's like, yeah. You know, I love it when people ask that about emails because it's like, uh, yes, I got the uh, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I missed it. My computer deleted it. What a mystery. <laughs> um, so there's a certain accountability built in, I think. But I mean, that's just like I think you just try to be respectful of people and like, Absolutely. and you know, treat them the way that you would want to be treated, and just remember what it was like for you when you were kind of vulnerable and like trying to figure out your way, and, mm -hmm. and how you can pay it forward. Pay it forward, yeah, exactly. Yes. Be that same way for others. So Andy, what is the best way that we? The public can get in contact with you or just the resources that you provide. Numerous ways, mm -hmm. in many ways. Um, you can go to www.springboardforthearts.org and you can find me there. Um, you can go to my personal page, which is www.virtuoodpalace.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can call me or email me too. I think if you just put in Springboard uh, phone number, you know, like usually I'm the person that picks up. So right. you'll, you'll hear this kind of mellifluous tone on the other line. <laughs> oh, that's the, that's the guy from Must the SPN Andy. show. Yes, Andy. <laughs> right. Andy, help me. And I think, yes, let's let's start from the beginning. Absolutely. Well, man, it's a pleasure to meet yes, you, Andy. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. And guys, give Andy a round of applause. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. That was great.
more candy fresh, I have an amazing gentleman right here. Craig Dunn is here. How are you, Craig? I'm very good. Thank you. Fantastic. So you do some amazing things. I'd like to hear about those amazing things. Well, I run an organization called VSA Minnesota. Sure. Everyone always asks what VSA is. Um, Greg, and what is VSA? VSA say? used to be very special arts. And it's part of a national organization. People have heard of uh, Special Olympics. One of the Kennedy, Kennedy sisters started sp uh, Special Olympics many years ago. Another of the Kennedy sisters started Very Special Arts a few years after that. And so there were Very Special Arts organizations uh, around the world. Uh, and I run the one in Minnesota and have since 1992 and have been with them since 1988. Well, congratulations on that. And what that organization does is work in the arts with people with disabilities. Okay. So, uh, and when we talk about arts, it's across all of the arts, uh, music, visual arts, drama, dance, writing, uh, media arts. And disabilities, it's also all across the, the board, whether it's physical disabilities, cognitive disabilities, blindness, deafness, uh, mental illness. Uh, so we're many things to many people. And uh, over the years, uh, what that has led to is uh, bringing artists to work with kids in classrooms, uh, kids in special education classrooms. Uh, having a, a grant program for individual artists with disabilities from around the state where we put money in their hands so that they can uh, make art, so that they can do their work. Uh, today we gave away $82,975 of state money. Thank you all of, all of you all taxpayers of you. out here that, yes. that paid into the Legacy Fund. Got all that money. Um, and so some of those organizations uh, are, are and, and I can't say who they are because it has one more step of approval, um, but, but they will be doing more in uh, outreach to people with disabilities. Uh, their facilities will be able to accommodate those people with disabilities better. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that, Mostly indirect, but lots of different ways that the programs we've done since 1986 has made the arts world, which is so great here in Minnesota, it is. accessible and available to people with disabilities as well. I think this is a fact. I may be a little biased, but I believe we have one of the best artist communities in the nation. Oh, absolutely. Obviously, the Melting Pot is incredibly talented, but also the accessibility. You just listed that yourself with mm -hmm. the number of grants and the resources and the just leadership and development. So it's so great to hear uh, VSA, is there, what's So the VSA name? Minnesota. VSA Minnesota. Yes. And it's, it's part of a national platform? Yeah, and what's, what's weird is seven, eight years ago, the national organization was defunded by Congress. No fun. So that meant we lost a bunch of money. Sure. And over the last few years, those, those funding sources have also gone down. Mm -hmm. So it's sad to say uh, that our organization is only around for another four months. You've got to be kidding. Yes. Um, How but can we what, help make but that longer? It, it, it can't, it, you can't. Uh, the, the decision has been made. The board has made that decision. But what you can uh, do and support, one of your previous guests was Andy Sturdivant. Yes. And he's at Springboard. Yes. And Springboard is going to take on our artist services for people with, with disabilities. Like, likewise, uh, our artist residency programs, where we put artists into classrooms with kids with disabilities, that's going to be taken on by another great St. Paul organization, Compass. And they're already a great residency organization. They're just going to broaden their scope to, and, and we've started providing some, some background information, some training, so that they're better equipped to work with kids with disabilities. A seamless so, transition is the hope. Well, we hope, yes, yeah. yeah. And then there's one other program uh, that w I mentioned earlier, the grant program for artists with disabilities. We've awarded, oh, I can't remember what the amount, but we've done this for 23 years with funding from another organization that's in this complex, uh, uh, the Jerome Foundation. Yes, they're amazing. So the Jerome Foundation has funded us for 23 years. Uh, and because of that, so many artists with disabilities have done things that they would have never been able to do. BSA Minnesota was the only 
uh, only privately funded organization in the country to have a grant program for artists with disabilities and the primary reason was the Jerome Foundation. So we, we've been very happy uh, with them. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have someone to take on that grant program for artists with disabilities, but maybe maybe the State Arts Board will, will pick something up uh, to, to carve out some money for some, uh, for some individuals that have some difficulties in being able to write grants and you know, some of the people that we've been able to fund have been successful with Jerome through some other programs. Uh, someone from, the, from Northern Clay Center just was awarded a, wow. a fund. So people with disabilities have lots of, of uh, abilities and yeah. for our 33 years of doing this, we've helped a lot of them find their way through it. Isn't that amazing, everybody? I mean, come on, give us just like look some love on that for a minute. I think that everyone deserves a chance to be, Absolutely. to uh, you know, showcase their creativity. I think that whether they call themselves a public artist or not, there's different ways they incorporate it at home, whether it's you know privately within the four walls, or they showcase it out into the public. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask a fun fact about about you. Is there a an, a side of Craig, the artistic side, that maybe? isn't showcased because you're so you know amazing oh, behind the scenes yeah I mean, I mean i'm an administrator and you know i'm at a computer pretty much all day but my background i was a music educator and a music therapist uh, i worked with kids with disabilities in classrooms for 12 years mm. uh, before taking this on and i also was a choir director again for adults with developmental disabilities right. i did that for 25 years um, had 75 people in my choir some of them sang in tune, <laughs> not many, Sometimes. but but everybody was very energetic, and yeah. we had so many. We learned so much repertoire over those twenty five years, and they had a ball, and it was one of the saddest days I ever had uh, when I said someone else needs to have the fun I've had for twenty five oh, years to. It's so yeah, so for the last nine years there have been uh, a couple of different directors. Well, we've heard the phrase "art is healing." Oh yes. So whether that is seeing what. The, the community that you support and even your previous time mm -hmm. with the music. Um, it's just so fun to hear it, to see it, to be a part of it, to support it. What is next? I mean, you have four months left at the Four months Minnesota. At, at the organization. And, and then what? And, and then now what? I'm, I'm probably going to do some, uh, I'm probably going to get back at my keyboard. Okay. I'm probably going to pick up my guitar a little more than I have for okay. the last number of years. But I'm also going to go out and help uh, some organizations that still haven't cracked that nut of accessibility. Right. Uh, there's there's still a lot of work to be done there, and uh, so that'll that'll keep me going. I I turn 65 next June, and so you know maybe I'll be a birthday uh, concert. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe <laughs> I'll do cafe. that, and maybe I'll just enjoy retirement. Who knows? I mean, sometimes artists and us just can't not do that. Yeah, something. oh no, and, and I'm, already on, I'm already on the Metropolitan Regional Arts Council's uh, board of directors, uh, newly coming on, and I'm guessing there, there might be a couple other opportunities for that too. I'm sensing that too. Yeah. Can we just show it one more round of applause for Craig and all the amazing work he's done? Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for more Candy Crash. It's that Candy Crush, got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. We have the lovely, beautiful Heather McElrath oh, here. Oh my goodness. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So Glad good to, to have you. We're just grateful that you can be here. We've had a little run-in before. We yes, met about a year and a half ago. We sure did. We connected those dots and we realized we're pageant sisters. Yes. So that's pageant. why we got the pageant you know, posture right now. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Pageantry is a form of art, right? For sure, for sure. Man, a lot goes into it. So let's talk more about you and all the amazing things that you're doing. Oh my. Well, if we want to go all the way back to pageantry. Oh, um, wherever. <laughs> I mean, the platform is yours right, right now. So back in 1992, I ran in the Miss Black Minnesota pageant, and I was third runner-up in that 
illustrious pageant that's wow. here locally. They still run it, I believe, to this day. They do. We yes. had a former Miss Black Minnesota USA here not long ago. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very good. Was yeah. it Julian Jackson's daughter? Yes, it was. Thomas Eastway. Yeah, right. Thomas that's Eastway. Right. One of my alma maters, I would Aww, say. Oh, yeah. look at the family the and family the community here. of Candy Fresh coming together. And that was a long time ago, but from there, um, progressing forward in terms of how I got into theater. Yes. Um, most recently, there was a woman that went to my church. So I'm, I'm one of those that did get a background starting in the church. Okay. And so one of my choir members had a friend, uh, the great Judy Cooper Lau, who runs Urban Spectrum Theater here sure. locally, had a play that she was producing and one of the lead singers fell ill. Mm -hmm. And so this woman at my church was like, well, Heather, she can sing. Why don't you have her come out? <laughs> and so from that, that's how we wound up meeting. I did a play called So Blue. Wow. And I played Big Mama Thornton, and I did Hound Dog, which she wrote but was made popular oh by yeah, Elvis Presley. Bit. Oh, Lord. Oh, <laughs> Someone, something can told Can I pull me that, that out of you happen. later? <laughs> you sure can. I, I could do a little ditty for you a little okay. later. Okay, give it a minute. Give it a minute, yeah. <laughs> but from there, um, the evaluators from the Ivy Awards came out and yeah. saw that production. And I didn't had I had no idea that Judy had actually submitted me as a person for the performance Aww. piece for that year's Ivy Awards, and they selected me, so I was able to perform at the State Theater and sing Hound Dog by Big Mama Thornton. Now this is a theater. couple of years ago, right? This is a couple of the, a couple of years ago, the year before they ended. So the twelfth um, annual yes. Ivy Awards was where we met on wow. the red carpet. Wow, we met on the red carpet. That's right. So taking it back to Hound Dog, mm -hmm. can we get a little bit? Yeah, you ain't nothing but a hound dog scooting round my door. You ain't nothing but a hound dog been snooping round my door. You can wag your tail, but I ain't gonna feed you no more. <laughs> oh, my Lanta. Look at the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. I think we need to come and see you in action a little bit more than this little snippet. So are you oh, are you currently still performing? Well, currently, right now, I'm in audition phase. That's right a now. beast right and there. It is. And I have a very super secretive play that I am actually working on. It's in production right now, so okay. we're workshopping it right now. It's the musical. So hopefully soon in the future, it will be put on stage. We're going to have to have you come back yes. later in season four or five and talk about this. And talk about that for sure. I would love to. Are you, so how else do you support the artist community? Because right now you're doing things on the back end of mm -hmm. it. You've been on the front end of it. Um, you're connecting with all spectrums of artistry. Yeah. Like how do you give back or support others in their field? What's very nice is because I have quite a few mentors in the music industry and in the theater industry right now, um, I am a, I feel like a baby in it. I'm only two years old in musical theater here locally as well as singing locally. There's a great uh, band that I sing background with okay. and we premiere a lot at the Dakota and it's called Jay Young and the Lyric Factory. So most recently we were at the Dakota. Check out the Dakota, yeah, go see this Dakota. lovely lady. But yeah, so, I, so for me right now, because I'm so new in terms of giving back at this point right now, sure. I need to be talking to some of your other guests so they can give to <laughs> me to help me find out some more navigation around this industry. But what has been very nice is everyone has been so welcoming and right. so nice and wonderful that I've not had a bad experience yet with any of the auditions that I've gone on or any of the other productions that I've been in as well. I think we have an advantage because we chatted about this earlier. It's such a melting pot yes. of just diversity across the board, mm -hmm. you know, in your arts and talents. Um, what you bring to the table right. and those that are cheering you on mm -hmm. and uh, someone that may be an expert or professional in the field for decades mm -hmm. can be inspired by somebody younger than them right or in a whole different field mm -hmm. or someone that's newer that's you know maybe even inspiring somebody you know vice versa and so that's I, I love really hearing great. that that's what's really great that you know as, as someone that's not um, a theater major have not a theater background to come in and be embraced by the theater community in such a way that was, I, like I said, I've not felt like, oh my God, I want to run away. Why did I ever think about right. getting into that? It makes me want to pursue it even more because it is so inviting. Yeah. Um, I was always afraid that thinking if I were to go into the auditions, you have this big table and everybody's going to be sitting there looking at you, right. judging. <laughs> but everybody has been so nice and because, I don't know if it's my personality to a degree, 
But one of the funniest things that happened to me in an audition <laughs> was I went in and I went to go shake and they went in for a hug. Oh. And I was like, oh, we're doing this? I didn't think we it were able Minnesota. to It is Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota nice. There's that name for a reason. Right. So that's why I was really surprised that that kind of inviting thing was happening Good. even in the auditions. And even when you haven't gotten a part, they're very very respectful in terms of letting you know. Yeah. Um, some are really, even really good about giving you good feedback and helping you to know what you need to do to kind of get the part maybe the next It time. is not easy. The audition phase, mm -hmm. I mean, everything is rigorous from the second you have an idea even conceived yes. in your mind to post-production and then you celebrate. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways you've overcome these challenges you may have faced, whether if it's mental or physical or all types of challenges? Well, the That's one thing is artists. learning lines. That is very much a very scary <laughs> thing. And to my second big production, my first big production was a Ghost the Musical out at Old Log uh, Theater. I was the older Mae Brown in that. But from there, I went to do Hairspray up in Bemidji. Oh, yes, and I was Motormouth Maybell in that. And <laughs> oh, the fun. expectation was that we would come to the rehearsals and be off book. Get out. So for those of you that don't know what off book is, <laughs> off book means you need to come ready for a rehearsal and know all of no your script. lines, no <laughs> script, and be ready to do it. Because um, it was a summer stock theater production, so we had nine days to put on a 10-day performances to learn it with all the people we've never met before. So you had to come and be ready. And it was the most intimidating thing I ever bet. because it was only the second big production that Can I you was say in. line every 30 line. seconds? Or and no? I know you couldn't. You could not. And <laughs> so kick me out. Yeah. So it was very, very like and from the, the experience that I'd had on Ghost, um, and having been in there and get the script that day and you're like, you, you you want me to learn this and then I have to come back tomorrow and be ready to do pages yes, girl. that I just saw yesterday. Yeah. So that, that was very daunting, that task. But to, to be up there, um, I felt you really proud of myself that I was able to get up there and you be off book. Yes. And is it like muscle memory, where you keep doing it? The more you do it, the easier it gets? I don't know how soap opera artists do this. Every day, they're yeah. doing a whole new script. The more you do it, I think, and you settle into the character. Yeah. And um, I had a really great acting coach named M Mary Harris. Here, she's a local great jazz singer, theater okay. artist as well. And um, I remember going to her house for um, a session and just so frustrated, darn near about to break down and think, why am I doing this? Why do they think I can do yeah. this? And she said, honey, you have conversations every day. Mm -hmm. So to look at the script and think of it as a conversation right. with the other characters in the script. Right. And when she said it, and we were doing this thing where I had to knock on a door and come into a house and you know get going, and once she said it, the very next day, this was for Ghost, not for Hairspray, the very next day I went to the set and I was ready. But it was because that great you were, Mary- You were the character. I was the character. But it was her telling me it's a conversation. Right. Helped me so much more than anything Good. else and not being so, I got to get every word right. No, you have to settle into it and yeah. feel it and, and let it become you sure. and become part of you. Like you said, you're two years into your practice, but mm -hmm. I think even people that have been in there for years and decades, I've heard, you know, just even being in front of the camera, you get nerves every time. You have oh. to continuously practice. That's why you take on mm -hmm. different roles to keep challenging you. For sure. So going with the theme of today, we got a little an idea of what's mm -hmm. coming up, but what's next? What's next for you? What's next is audition. Once audition season starts back up doing that, and I typically am in Black Nativity at the Penumbra Theater All every right. year, so hopefully that'll still be coming up this November through December. Um, and then, like I said, that super secretive play in July. Mm. And then just hitting back into the audition trail. And then the other thing I would love to do because of being in musical theater, yeah. they really would like for you to come in being a triple threat. And a triple threat is being an actor, sure. a singer, and then that last one, like we were dancing just yes. a little bit ago. Yeah. We were chair dancing. There's a difference with chair dancing mm -hmm. and actually dancing on the stage. I think you can do it. You think she can do it? She can oh, do it. Oh, Lord. She can do it, right? Right, y'all? I'm more of a mover. I fancy <laughs> myself more of a mover. So for me, I would love to take more dance workshops and okay. dance lessons and things like that to get more accustomed to getting the counts a little bit yeah. a little bit faster than what I'm able to practice right makes now. perfect yeah. Ms. Heather. And so I used where to can dance. We, where can we get you do some dance? I, I sensed it. A long time ago. <laughs> where can we follow you and support you and, and learn all about what's coming up? You can find me on Heather Mac Axe and that's Heather M C Axe at Facebook and then I'm also on Instagram at 19 Black Mamba 69. 
That's right. Give it up Not for Ms. Heather McElrath. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. Man, today was a heck of a day, but we can't finish it off without introducing to my man, DJ Doug D. How you doing, Khalid? Yeah, I'm doing blessed and well favored, just like you, my yeah, man. I appreciate you. So, when it comes to this whole DJ thing. Yes, sir. What era would you say was the best era of being a DJ? Um, I think the best is yet to come. Mm, I yeah. like that. I like the that. Because you're still come. doing it, right? Still doing it. There's, there's more <laughs> technology in it now. Uh -huh. um, and there's a ton of new talent. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think the best is yet to come. I think the youth will just take this thing to a whole nother level. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you find yourself learning from what's being done there. Absolutely. You go to mm -hmm. a lot of the clubs now and you got VJs along with DJs. So I some see. of them will play, you know, the videos along with the music. You got this brother... Um, he actually plays a trombone mm -hmm. in between the songs. What? Yeah, you got a lot of different things out there. <laughs> to diversify, To right? diversify, Man. absolutely. So how did you get your overall experience when it comes to DJing? Where did that come about? What kind of was the seed that was planted in you? Um, the seed was just basically, um, I'm the youngest. I got four of the older brothers, yeah. and they all had different music styles. So I would take their records mm -hmm. and their turntables, and I would make my own little mixes and, ah. and collect different you know, genres from each brother. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just kind of grew. I got a mixer and started hanging out with a couple fellas who like DJing as well. Mm -hmm. And we threw house parties in St. Paul. Oh, y'all got it lit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, was, yeah. what was a popping record at that time? Back then, uh, like LL Cool J's Rock the Bell. Okay. Huge record. Back <laughs> then. Yeah. So when it comes to collaborating, because that's what I'm hearing, is a lot of collaboration when it yes. comes to DJing. And almost as if like, you know that old phrase, there's nothing new under the sun. Because mm -hmm. I hear nowadays so many people sample old records. Correct. So when it when it came into that, what era did you grow up in? Like what, you know, what time was that? Yeah. And then what influenced the sound that you guys were creating? Sure, sure, absolutely. We started throwing parties in the 80s, early 80s, and, mm -hmm. and just house parties, and then that grew into St. Paul Central. I guess right. I'm a graduate of St. Paul Central and and did their snow days dances and, okay. and things like that. So having a diverse friendships with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, we threw church parties, so we got to learn, <laughs> you know, clean versions. And right. then our house parties, we got to do dirty versions. Right. And, and just the, the dynamic of having a bunch of different friends, you know, black, white, everybody was, was incorporated in our crew. Um, we got to do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Like I said, from the churches to the house parties and, and everything in between growing up in the 80s. I like that. And I keep hearing like this, we. So when it comes to DJing, it's more of a brotherhood, I'm assuming. Um, it can be. Yeah. Um, or is there competition? I'm sure there is. Definitely is competition. Um, and, and, and sometimes that brotherhood becomes just clicks versus clicks. You right. Know, the same kind of thing. With uh, I used to be a break dancer, so we used to have break dance battles. Oh, you used to get to it. Yeah. That's what the hat for. You That's spin on your head. head. <laughs> no, I never got to the head, but I did spin on the back and pop lock and right. battles and competition. and. And uh, had a lot of great stories, you know, as far as mm -hmm. growing up in, in the elements of hip hop nice. in the Twin Cities. We're gonna have to kick it after. I need to learn a few new <laughs> moves or two, you know. So when it comes to that, the overall like, since there was clicks, things of that nature, mm -hmm. what made your group stand out amongst the others? Um, what was like your niche? I know me and Andy was talking about signatures. What was your signature? Yeah, I would have to say my signature became out at a club in Fridley, Minnesota called TC's. Mm. It was a teen club. Um, I was fortunate enough to get inside there and, and DJ there. And you had KMOJ, which was right on the north side. So okay. you had their DJs. And I was just a new DJ on the scene to Got them. You. So when they came out trying to say, oh, hey, man, we're KMOJ, we'll, you know, take over. Owner was just like, chill, chill. This brother right here, he right, got it. Right. You know, we've been doing it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, from, from there, uh, TC's was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, that gave us a, just more of a home-based niche that we could just kind of play and do whatever we wanted to do out there. Right? Gotcha. Kind of like that home court advantage, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> I see it. So when it comes to, like, you have your niche, what was something that, you know, DJs normally have their spiel, like something they say before they get on or when they're introducing themselves? What was yours? Um, 
I didn't really have a spiel. Yeah. I, I'm more of an entertainer gotcha. when, when it comes to like, Just DJing. listen to these tracks. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to listen to the tracks. I'm going to interact with you. From, yeah. from TC's, I was fortunate enough to present a mixtape over to Prince. Oh, snap. And okay. then I became the resident DJ at Glam Slam when he opened Glam Slam in Minneapolis. Okay, my brother, go ahead. Yeah. Then. So, <laughs> so, so my, my style was always different than every other DJ in Minnesota. I rocked hats. I did suckers. I did. I did a lot of interaction where a lot of DJs will just play the record. Right. I'm trying to stop the record and say, "You, you dance. You ain't danced all night. Right, you right. know, curse someone out and put them on the spot because it's it's about entertainment and, and and leaving a lasting memory as opposed to just saying, you know, my name's on the flyer every week. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then that's the one thing that I've noticed as well when it comes to different DJs. Some DJs know what playlist, what like rhythm that they want to go in, the sequence of their music Correct. that just moves the whole entire sea of people. Correct. But then you get some DJs that just seem not to get it. What creates that? <laughs> I don't know what creates the latter part. <laughs> I focus so much on, on, on the, the magic. It, yeah, right? on the magic. <laughs> Correct. And, and, and you know, some DJs will have off nights, but my emphasis is on a memory. Right. And, and creating memories for the people that are there on any level. Like I said, from the house parties, we, we still got those memories out there. And then, you know, all the way up to Glam Slam and yeah. traveling. Okay. And stuff like that. So what would you say if, if it was a rough night, right? Mm -hmm. People ain't moving their feet. They just, you know, trying to look cool with their with they lady friend. Or maybe they're holding up a wall, which tends to happen most of the time. Right. <laughs> what would you say is a go-to song that gets everybody moving? Um... Mentioning Chicago in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> See that reaction? Because so, he knows no, but the no. people from Chicago just tend to just like, yep, it's ours now. We're no, taking over. That's a fact. That's uh, a fact. Because I'm from Chicago. That's why you acknowledge like, Chicago in oh, hold Minnesota. On, hold on a and second, And everyone, man. Will, everyone will like, get in line. And we're out there from Chicago. Everyone, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. South Side, South yeah, Side. Chicago represents hard. Yeah, it's hard too. And they get to it because in that culture, it was a big influence of house music. Correct. You know, and even though that like originated in New York, but having that come to Chicago and the footworking and all that stuff is that yep. typically when I see a person dancing, if I'm out, I'm already knowing like he probably from Chicago. <laughs> exactly. Because he ain't scared. He's exactly. doing his thing. He's going at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Not afraid Man. to sweat. And that's a good thing. And that's the key for me. Yep. So when it comes to this day and age and how do you influence the next generation? of DJs? Do you mentor? Do you, do you train other people? Or? Um, not, not necessarily mentor or train. I'm yeah. um, open to it, as, you know, as far as anyone wanting to learn anything, yeah. you know, as far as passing on skills. That's mostly mainly within my family and within my immediate network. Right. You know, when people need something, you know, I'll show them something or, you know, if they need to borrow my equipment, yeah. you know, go for it. Right. You know, Cause it ain't cheap. No, it's not cheap. What would you say the investment would be? If you were getting into it, say if I was a person like, man, after talking to you, because mm -hmm. I kind of feel like I want to kind of you know, scratch the one twos, right. what would that investment look like? A couple thousand. Oh, uh, yeah, a uh, couple uh, thousand. Excuse me? Just a couple thousand. Oh, a couple thousand. A couple mm. thousand. Okay. <laughs> couple Our thousand. birthday is coming up soon, <laughs> y'all. June 22nd, I'll let your boy. I take cash app, too. That's um, right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Well, okay. Because that was always my thing is like, you know, but there are avenues that people can go and rent equipment Correct. too, right? Absolutely. Twin Cities has a bunch of different uh, places like Metro Sound and Lighting in the St. Paul. Mm -hmm. They rent out speakers, DJ equipment as well to allow people to practice that yeah. stuff. I'd recommend going to a pawn shop and picking up some Listen used up, equipment. Used equipment. That way you can see if you're if this is going to be something that you really want to invest your money into. Right. You know, you can start small. Like I said, I, I got equipment from my brothers. Yeah. You'll be surprised if you want to be a DJ <laughs> or someone to say, oh, man, you can have my old stuff and I practice see. on that, mm -hmm. you know, it's just to get you going. Then once you, you know, your feet get wet. Hey, and then they're going to start paying you to come check them out. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, what's one way we can get up with you and stay in tune with what you got going on? Go sure. to an event, uh, get our feet moving. Yep. Um, uh, you can find me on Instagram on Forever Eternal. Um, find me on Facebook on Forever Eternal. You can mm -hmm. find me on Mixcloud under uh, mixcloud.com slash Doug Davison one. You can listen to all my mixes out there for free. Yes, sir. Most definitely. I'm excited. We're going to check it out. All right. Once Khalid. again, give it up for my man, DJ Doug D. Thanks for having me. All all right. Right.
It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show up, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show up, get your shine on. All right, all right. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Candy Fresh. I'm Kalik. And I'm Anahita. And we had a wonderful time with all our guests in our live studio audience. I want to give a special shout out to my man DJ Doug D on the ones and twos. Yes. My man Andy here from Springboard. All right. So honored to have Craig Dunn here today and the lovely Miss Heather was here gracing us with her voice. Yes. Well, once again, you guys know what's up. We're watching another episode of Candy, Candy Friends. There we go. Candy Fresh got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy Fresh gon' show up. Get your shine on. It's that Candy Fresh got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on.